And who's that in the kitchen? It's Violator. And he made cookies. Ooh. Hey everyone, this is Josh from Before, and I'm here with McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse Martian Manhunter from DC Rebirth. Real quick, before I get going, I just want to make a, an announcement to uh, all subscribers, new and old. You may already know we've been doing weekly live streams that tend to happen on Wednesdays during the day, with a few exceptions here and there. Uh, but I've also started doing game streams where we're playing through the Arkham Trilogy. And the plan is to probably start doing those twice a week, like once on a weeknight, like Tuesday, and then once on a weekend night, like Friday, Saturday, or even Sunday. The idea here is that I want to continue to bring you guys the stuff that you came here for in the first place and subscribed for in the first place, which is toy reviews and more toy content. But I also want to, uh, you know, expand the scope a little bit and create new opportunities for us to hang out, have fun, uh, and make friends, have a good time. So you know how this story goes. Hit the bell get the post notification, and you'll be in the loop uh, whenever I'm starting a live stream. And you can join in on the party with the rest of us. Now, let's get going with Martian Manhunter here. Take a quick look around the box. I got this through Amazon. Amazon coming through a little bit later than some of the other retail sources this time around. You know how you know how pre-orders go. You roll the dice. If you really want to get be the one to get there first, you, you could have multiple pre-orders going and then cancel once the first... Once the first one's on its way to you. I think it's time to, I think we can just get this guy out of here, right? Here he is fresh out of the box. He smells great because he's got this big rubbery cape. And I got to admit, you know, when I think of Martian Manhunter, I think of that older design that's just the, the red X across the chest. Uh, and I'm old and out of touch, you know. Uh, the Rebirth is not even that new, you know, and uh, I'm I'm not familiar with this design. So the joke's on me, really. All right, I'm going to bring him in here for a closer look. Normally, I start and just go kind of head to toe with the articulation, but I want to uh, bypass that for a second and draw the attention to a very significant upgrade here. Sculpted ball joint wrists and ankles. Now, I know ball joints can be a little, a little controversial, a little bit of a hot button issue. Now compare this to um, you know some other common retail figures like the ones that don't sell as much as McFarlane. They have these wrists that are more sculpted in, right? But they only hinge in that direction. And the ball joint obviously affords multiple different axes of movement. So they are superior. And when you have a, a ball joint wrist and it can make the difference between this pose and that, that's pretty significant. When it, when it can give you the difference between this pose and that, that's pretty significant. So the ball joint is the superior wrist. And, and when you take a look at something like this and you see what we've been getting in the past, just that big round ball, this is great news. This is great to see. Maybe not perfectly tooled, and you can see there is a little bit of a color mismatch there, but this is a great advancement. And now when you take this to the ankles, this is maybe the one point of articulation where I could understand why a Marvel Legends fan would prefer this, because it is pinless. Uh, it functionally more or less has about the same articulation as the ball joint, but man, half the time I get these, they're just fused. They don't want to work. And these things cost more anyway, so so it's great to see it. Uh, I can't can't wait to see many many more sculpted ball joint ankles and wrists. This is this is just great news. Now, okay, now let's pull back from those a bit. This this guy looks really cool. Um, he's got a lot of paint on him, which I really appreciate. Uh, you know, a lot of these little pieces of sort of trim have paint on them. The little medallions here that attach his cape to his uh, sort of breastplate here. They're painted, the paint's on there a little bit heavy. Uh, you can see it a little bit better that there is some sculpted detail on these things, um, but the paint is on it so heavy that when you get back here, you kind of lose it a little. Lose the detail a little bit. And then there are some spots like on here where it's there's 
things that have been painted, but they're not really sculpted in. Feels a little weird. Feels a little odd. But I, I do appreciate um, how many of these little details are painted, do have paint on them. He's got a good amount of paint there on his face. Which looks pretty good. It, it is a little close to cartoony for me. I, I, th I think that this Aquaman, I think, towed a really nice line between cartoony and exaggerated, uh, but yet still a little bit of exaggerated realness to it. This is a little bit more simplified, I think. He looks good. He's got good range there. Looks up fairly well. Looks down. Great head cock. Come down to the, the shoulders here. Great action in the shoulders. And this, this piece here is, is soft. So if you want to push his arms up a bit, like though it like so, it will move out of the way. Great action on the butterflies. I, I really appreciate the butterfly joints. I think they allow for great range of movement. Bicep cut there looks really nicely sculpted. Even though the elbows are still a bit awkward and unsightly. A bit of a gap there on that ball joint. And again, I, I pointed out earlier, but the fact that the wrists and the pins here, they don't quite match. It's a little unfortunate. Pretty good action here at the abdomen. And these things are also the soft material that can kind of move out of the way. Good waist movement, good ab movement. Kicks are a little encumbered by this large pelvis piece and, and hanging fabric here. A little bit of rotation in there, but not a ton. Love the texture on the pants. Just, uh, you know, gives it a little bit of definition. A little bit of detail. Keeps it from just being perfectly smooth. Double knees work really well. I don't love when they do these sharp points right there. And they really just don't, yeah. They don't look very clean when you do that. Great movement at those sculpted ankles and toes of course pretty cool good looking cape too not um you know not the flashiest or most extreme but nice creases like overlapping creases in here it's pretty cool and it's just got the maybe faintest little texture on there you get pretty close to see it i dig it i mean it's not blow you know mind blowing or anything beyond the uh the the new Development of the sculpted wrists and ankles, but I think this guy looks solid. We've been needing a Martian Manhunter. This will this will do for now. I, I, there's still several other iterations I think of the character that we could stand to see, but no accessories. One fisted hand, one accessory hand. I'd rather just have a gesture hand if they're not going to give us an accessory. Like I'm not going to complain about not getting an accessory, uh, but if you give me that hand and no, nothing to put in it, I'm a little annoyed. You know. Now look at this lineup. This is awesome. I'm not the guy who's complaining about too much Batman, but I am the guy who's complaining about like too much just gray and black and all these characters lined up here, all these different colors. That makes me really happy. Now we still need a good comic, Diana. Uh, you could put Gal in there. I don't think she's gonna cut it. Not not a match for me. And there've been other comic Wonder Woman uh, figures, but just not a. Uh, Rebirth's New 52-ish one like the rest of these characters. This is a pretty cool looking lineup. Now I know really both Clark and John here are, I would say, short. I think they kind of owe us a new Superman at this point. Uh, a little bit taller than this Wave 1 one. In general, I think, I think they need to start, you know, paying a little bit more closer attention to scaling issues. It's not really a deal breaker for me, 
But as as we start to get like teams assembled like this, it does become a factor. And I mean, you take into account like there's like more than two years in between these figures right here, right? And now, of course, you know I know people say they're uh, they're into toy photography. They uh, they want their figures to be uh, perfectly scaled for the photos and stuff. And I've said this before, and I'm not the first person to say it, but if you want to fix the scale, now he's a little bit taller. Now, I know that's only partially true. It's kind of a, you know, it's part joke. There's a, there is truth to it. Uh, you know, the, the truth of the matter though, is that when you get real, when you're doing toy photography, you got to get in real tight. You have a very tiny subject and it can uh, be a real factor for the depth of field where the focus falls. So I certainly do understand scaling issues, uh, the people that have issues with scaling, and I do hope they give it a little bit of attention. And then of course, once you get him uh, on a flight stand up in the air where he belongs, the, the height discrepancy definitely becomes less of an issue. Good looking group. I can't wait for a classic or rebirth or new 52, whatever. Wonder Woman. We, we need one now to really round this group off. And I actually need a Need a Hal Jordan. I, I didn't keep the two pack with him and Dawnbreaker. I didn't need another Dawnbreaker, but I do need a solo Hal Jordan, please. And while we're here, let's take a moment to celebrate today's Hall of Fame entry, Scotty Robinson, long, long time viewer and frequent commenter. It always brightens my day to see that there's a new comment from Scotty. He's always got a great positive attitude and interesting perspective. Thanks for being such a great friend of the channel, Scotty. Let's hear it for Scotty Robinson in the comments. And then here he is next to the Warhammer 40K Tyranid Gene Stealer. And it wasn't my idea, but we were hanging out during one of the live streams and someone suggested that it would make a great White Martian. So here are these two together. I think this is just a great, amazing $20 figure, really. Uh, Four-armed creature, and I don't, I, I'm kind of, I'm a DC poser, I guess. I just don't know shit about um, Martian Manhunter. I don't know what the White Martians are. Whatever, I read indie comics. Okay, you know, I, I didn't read the big two that much. Sorry. And then I have to show you him next to my custom Tech Shield Batman, Sky Escape Joker, and Bob the Goon. And mostly just so I can say, if you want to see how I made these custom action figures, go check out that video right now. All right, folks, that is Martian Manhunter, a great character, really good figure, really solid. I like him. Definitely a must-have if you're trying to com complete your Justice League. If this isn't your favorite design, I would imagine that you could hang on for a little bit and they'd probably give us another iteration of Manhunter down the road somewhere. But for now, hey, this is a great new non-Batman DC character. We love to see that, right? Even me, even though I don't know much about DC, once we get outside of Batman, I'm, I'm down for fleshing out the multiverse. So... Uh, if you're looking for him, like I said, this one came through on Amazon and other sources are coming through with him as we speak. So go out there and get him and I will see you all next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.